here is an example of a geometric series. A geometric series is got from a geometric sequence by just adding the terms. So for a geometric series you would see commas, each ter term separated by commas. So we're just summing the terms when we're talking about a series. Now for this geometric series, the first term a is 1, or the common difference is 2. You can see that if we take the second term t2 and divide by the first term t1, we get 2 divided by 1 is 2. S3 means the sum of the first three terms. We can write that as t1 plus t2 plus t3, and we can work that out. We get 1 plus 2 plus 4, which is 7. Now I want to just give you a formula for Sn of a geometric sequence, and then I will prove it. So Sn is a into 1 minus r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. And I will apply it to this series here to find S3. So a, the first term, is 1. We have 1 minus r, which is 2, to the power of n, which is 3, divided by 1 minus r, that's 1 minus 2. And this gives us 1 minus 8 on top, which is minus 7, divided by 1 minus 2 underneath, which is minus 1. So that does indeed check out. Now sometimes this formula here is written like this. These are identical, of course. Um, to go from this form to this form, you just multiply above by minus 1 and multiply underneath by minus 1. So you haven't actually changed anything. So if I multiply, I can multiply the minus 1 into this bracket here, and I'll get minus 1 plus r to the n, which is what we have here, minus 1 plus r to the n, or turned around, and multiplying minus 1 by on what's underneath, we get minus 1 plus r, which is just r minus 1. So these are identical. So it's just that some tables have it in this form and other tables have it in this form, but it doesn't matter. You get the same answer, whichever one you use. Now I'll give a proof of this thing here. If you don't want to see the proof, you can skip the next section. Sn is the sum of the first n terms. So this is the first term, t1. This is t2. This is t3 t4, all the way up as far as tn, the nth term. What we do is we multiply this series by r and add it on to, to, to this series. So we get r times sn. So if we multiply this series by r, we have r times a is ar. And I'm going to write that first term of this new series down here so that these match up. These are like terms. So now multiplying r by ar, we get ar squared. Um, if we multiply r by ar squared, we get ar cubed. If we multiply r by the second last term, the second last term here is actually ar to the power of n minus 2. You see, we just subtract 1 from n minus 1. n minus 1 minus 1 is n minus 2. So this would be the second last term. r times r to the power of n minus 2 is just r to the power of n minus 1. 1 plus n minus 2 is n minus 1. Finally, we multiply r by the last term. r times a r to the power of n minus 1 is a r to the power of n. So basically, we've kind of shifted this series one step to the right. The next step is to subtract. So we take sn and subtract r times sn. So we have a minus 0 is a. So we just have a 0 here. AR minus AR is 0. These cancel out. So everything will actually cancel out. Um, this will, this here will actually cancel out with a the term down here, which is also AR to the n minus 2. And uh, then we have 0 here minus AR to the n gives us minus AR to the power of n. So from this equation, we can find SN. SN times 1 minus R equals A minus AR to the power of n which means that Sn is a minus ar to the n divided by 1 minus r. We can factorize a out to the top of this. So here we get the formula that you saw earlier. Now I want to look at the situation where r is a number between minus 1 and plus 1. So for example, r could equal minus 3 quarters. It could equal plus a half, plus 7 eighths any number between minus 1 and plus 1. 
We saw earlier that if that's the case, then we have a decreasing sequence. For example, if r equals a half, we might have this sequence here. Half times 2 is 1, a half times 1 is a half. We can see that this is decreasing, and as I explained earlier, the terms are approaching 0. So that always happens when r is any number between minus 1 and plus 1. If r was minus a half, then we'd have this sequence. We'd have 2 minus a half plus a half minus a quarter plus an 8. We will have an alternating sequence if r is negative. What we need to look at is r to the power of n in our formula for Sn. And notice what happens as n gets bigger and bigger. So as n gets bigger and bigger, well we can write that as n tends towards infinity, r to the power of n will actually tend to 0. So for example, if r was a half, then we know that um, you know, a half squared is a quarter. See it's getting smaller as n gets bigger. If n is 2, so if n is 2, we get a number that's even smaller than a half. Um, if n is 3, we get a number that's smaller still. A half cubed is less than a half squared. So if we take any number in this range and raise it to a power, then we get a smaller number. If n is a positive integer, um, we get something smaller and smaller each time. Whether it's a half or whether it's 3 quarters. It's the same thing if we look at 3 quarters squared, we get 9 over 16. And 9 over 16 is less than 3 quarters. We get something smaller. So what's happening is n tends towards infinity is that r to the power of n is tending towards 0. So when we're summing an infinite number of terms, we can write s sub infinity. And what will happen is that this term here will go to 0 as n tends towards infinity. So we're left at a times 1 over 1 minus r. So this is the sum to infinity of a geometric series. But this formula only holds, of course, as long as r lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So as an example, let's take this series here. a, the first term, is 1, or the common difference, which must be a number between minus 1 and plus 1, in order for us to be able to sum this series, is a half divided by 1, which is a half. We take t2 and divide by t1, we can get r. So you can see a half is lying between minus 1 and plus 1. So it makes sense to sum this series. This series will converge. So s infinity is going to be a over 1 minus r. It's going to be 1 over 1 minus a half. And that's equal to 1 divided by a half. 1 divided by a half is 2. Let's use Wolfram Alpha to calculate this series. To do that, we have to look at the general term of this series. We have to get Tn. Tn is AR to the power of n minus 1 for a geometric series. A is 1. R is a half. So this is just a half to the power of n minus 1, or if you like, 0.5 to the power of n minus 1. Now here I'm taking the first term, first 10 terms of the series. So we want to sum 0.5 to the power of n minus 1 from n equals 1 to 10. Here's the value you get, and here is a graph. So you can see that all the values are approaching 2. So when n equals 10, we get a number that's very close to 2. If we want to see this as a decimal, it's 1.99805. If we change our sum from n equals 1 to 20 now, we get this value here. If you, if you want to see this as a decimal, just click on it. This is the approximate sum. Of course, it's, the sum is approximating to 2. Just click on this. So now we get a number that's much closer to 2 than the previous sum. Finally, I'm summing from n equals 1 to 100. So here's a fraction form get the decimal form. So as you can see, this number is getting even closer to 2, but we never reach 2. 